Okay, so we're in the middle of a series on uh, choices, uh, and uh, it's called The Five Choices That Shape Our Lives, right? How many sermons do you think there'll be in this series? A lot. A lot? <laughs> yeah, you never know with me. I, they said there'd be no math on the test, you know, so. Um, anyway, so uh, we're, we're at week three, and uh, I decided it was time to get really serious and, and have a, uh, a, a life and death choice, you know, that just grips <coughs> us and grabs us. Now, the thing about choices, one of the things we're, we're learning here is that um, Choices mean for us that we have uh, freedom, freedom to choose, right? And uh, you can choose wisely, you can choose poorly, um, but there's a certain freedom in that. And when we, when we sense that we have no choices, then that's when we feel like we have no freedom and um, uh, it's easy to become the victim or we feel like we're controlled by uh, forces beyond us. But the reality of the choices we make is a, is a claiming of, um, of freedom. And in the Bible, this is shown over and over again uh, that, that we have great options of choosing. Now, the passage today is in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and, and I come to this one a little reluctantly because last week, uh, you ever heard of Facebook, you know? <laughs> On that worldwide internet, yeah. So, um, so I'm on Facebook and I'm and I've got the flu and I'm feeling sorry for myself, you know. So what do you do? You you put a little message on there so everybody, all your friends, you know, feel sorry for you. So I put on this thing, you know. Oh, I got the flu and I feel bad and I'm miserable. I don't know if I'm gonna live or die, you know. And then some faithful person from the church, Alice, who <laughs> <laughs> nameless, writes me, look at Deuteronomy 30, Pastor. <laughs> and so I did, and this is what it says. Now, this is Moses talking to the people. Last week we saw the people got right up to the promised land and then they bolted and said, we're not going in. We want to get rid of Moses and Aaron and, and pick new leaders who are going to take us back to bondage. And so they went back out into the wilderness for a long time. Now they get right back up there again and they're faced with some of the same choices. And Moses gives what was probably going to be his last uh instruction, his last speech to the people. In verse 11 it says, now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or is it beyond your reach? It's not up in the heavens so you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we can obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we can obey it. No, the word is very near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart so you may obey it. See, I, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commands decrees and laws, then you'll live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you're entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you're not obedient, and if you're drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, then I declare to you this day that you'll certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land that you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day, and I think this is what Alice was getting to me, uh, this day I call heaven and earth to, as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he'll give you many years in the land that he swore to give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I think Alice was saying to me, hey, John, quit feeling sorry for yourself and choose life. But let's pray. Lord, teach us from your word. Teach us how we might uh, uh, own up to the choices before us and that we would choose you. And in doing that, choose to live and to live in your blessings. Uh, give us the courage to do that. In Jesus' name. 
Well, this is probably one of the most uh, significant passages of Scripture in terms of being a, uh, a crossroads where what happens next really matters. And we've seen, like in last week when we looked at the passage where the people of Israel got right up to the land and then they scouted it out and were afraid and said, oh no, this is going to be too much for us. We'd rather be back in slavery than, than to go into this. Now they're there again and faced with another decision. Are we going to respond in faith or are we going to respond in fear? Right? And so Moses reframes it and says, this is a life and death decision for you. And you need to know it. And you, you have the option. Now I love that he says, this is not a, a, a big thing. This is not a hard thing for you. You notice that in the verse 11? What I'm commanding today is not too difficult for you. It's not beyond your reach. Because we think, oh my gosh, you know, if I've got to make a life and death decision, how will I know what to do? How This is so hard. I've got to get good advice. I've got to research this. I've got to talk to people. Uh, this is too big for me. He goes, you know, it's not like it's a big secret up in heaven and you have to get spiritual gurus to come around you and, and interpret for you or you're not going to be able to understand it. And it's not like it's across the sea and it's out of your reach and you need to be brave and courageous and go on a huge expedition to find this. This is not that, Moses says. This is really easy for you. You just make the choice. Life or death. Blessing or misery. <clears throat> Love God and walk with Him. Or go your own way. Our old friend uh, Bruce Larson, I work with at University Press, used to say that um, hell is the place where, uh, what's the Burger King at? Have it your way. If you have to have it your way, that's where you, you belong in hell. Because that's where you go if you have to have it your way. And if you're able to say, no, Lord, I'll trust you. I don't have to have it my way. Then there's all kinds of blessings in life that opens up. And, and that's basically what Moses is telling the people here. And uh, he's saying it's not a big mystery. It's not a big... Uh, deal. It, it's not a scary thing. It's just something that you can choose and you have the power to choose. Now, the fact that we have the power to choose is an important thing because a lot of times, uh, for me, you know, I, I get into that victim thing, you know, way too often and uh, little things set me off because I love being depressive and, you know, controlling my world that way. And, uh, and so I, I like to think I don't have choices. Look what's happened to me. Look what these people are doing to me. Or look what the, the fates of all, you know, this is all terrible and the system stinks and all this. Which all may be true, but I have a choice how I'm going to respond to that. And you have a choice how you're going to respond. Now, um, in, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some different psychological theories here. And... Uh, uh, because I've spent a lifetime in counseling, so you know I've lived this, and uh, I've been raised by a pack of wild psychologists. And so um, the uh, it used to be that we thought, and there was a, a whole way of uh, of counseling and approaching people called behavioral therapy, behavior modification therapy. And so you heard of that? That's where um, you help people by kind of slapping them if they do wrong, patting them if they do right, you know that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, so. Uh, and that theory was, things happen in life, and we react emotionally. We feel things, sad, glad, bad, mad, whatever, you know, misery. And we, we feel these feelings, and then uh, we, we have to sort of sort them out with our minds, and then decide how we're going to respond to, the, to that circumstance. And, and there was a whole school of psychology that believed this is what we do as people. Things happen, we get emotional about it, then we think it through, and then we make a decision, and then we act on that. A few years ago, that was turned on its head. 
uh, by a couple of different psychologists. Um, uh, but one of them was um, William Glasser, a physician, who wrote this book called Choice Theory. And in it, he said, it's really different because actually, we have the power to make a choice, right? And then, whatever happens to us, we've already made our choice. So instead of just responding to what happens to us, we've made our choice, the circumstance happened, and then we act accordingly based not on our emotions and what we think is the best plan, but we act on the choice we've already made. Right? Now, uh, it doesn't matter to me if you like choice theory or behavioral modern theory, none of those really matter. Uh, because, but but the, the Bible is saying here a little bit of what uh, William Glasser is saying. They're not quoting William Glasser, by the way. He's probably gotten it from them. But, um, but Moses is saying, look, make your choice now. Before you go into the land, before you have experiences there, before you face trouble, before you face heartache, before you face prosperity and joy, whatever happens, you've already made your choice. And then you live out the implications of it. See? That's biblically true, and it's psychologically sound. So why don't I do it? Well, that's a whole other question. But the, the fact is, if we realize that, that God gives us the power to make our choices and we can do that right up front, then it helps us in our relationships and in our work and in our school and in our life because we're not just reacting to things and wrestling through our feelings. We still have our feelings, but we've already set the course of how we're, how we're going to respond. Now, what is it that, that happens? If you make a, a decision, you make a choice, right? Choose this state, life and blessing or death and misery. Boy, that sounds pretty clear. I don't know why I'm always picking the misery side, but you know, maybe I'm gonna change today. You know, that's why I'm preaching to myself. But um, you know, if we say we, we make this choice, then there's ramifications for that. And we would live out uh, different actions based on the choice that we make, right? So um, this actually helps us because um, you know, we like having lots of choices, but uh, there, there's been a lot of scientific studies actually out of Caltech that um, uh, have shown that you actually can reach a point where you have too many options, and then it's very difficult to make a choice. Isn't that funny? You know, you, you always want to choose, um, you know, plain label vegetables or Del Monte. The Del Monte picture always looks better. You know, they look fresher. Probably made in the same place, but. Um, you can make that choice, but then what happens? You go and you go, oh my gosh, there's like 14 different kinds of green beans. Now a new thing happens. I have to make the perfect choice. I can't just choose one. I have to make the right choice. And then we often walk away without getting any of them. You know? And, uh, and that's why I love that Moses says here in the scripture, you know, this is not a big deal. This is not a mystery. It's right here. You've got a choice. Two things. You, you don't have to get lost in all these choices of your life. You've got two things here. You're going to choose life, love the Lord, walk with Him, obey Him, or go your own way, live in misery, die. That's pretty much it. And that's a choice that we all get to make. Now, what, what blocks me from making choices? Um, I do have that syndrome of you know, needing to make the right choice. And Eileen hates going to restaurants with me. You know, she orders the same thing every time, you know. One of those darn veggie burgers, you know. <laughs> that's it. You know, maybe she gets wild sometimes and gets the uh, BLT. <laughs> That's it. 
I, meanwhile, am scouring the menu for the right thing. And then I have to grill the waiter and the waitress, asking, what do you think, you know? And it's like, John, you've been here a million times in this restaurant, just get what you want. And so I asked, which is better, you know? Have you ever gone to eat with me? You know, which is better? Ask the waitress. I don't ask the people at the table, because what do they know? I, I ask the waitress, well, which is better? And they go, well, that depends. That is not helpful. <laughs> that depends on, on what you like. No, just tell me what is better. And then they don't. They go, well, oh, you have to decide it. Yeah. Now, Eileen believes that I have the syndrome where I think this is my last meal and I have to have the perfect thing or, you know, my life is ruined and I brood all, all day long, you know. And, uh, and we're going to face this tomorrow on our birthday because we're going out to Ivers Salmon House up in, you know, north here, Muckleteo. And I'm going to sit there and ask the waiter, what should I order? You know, too many choices. Why doesn't Ivor Salmon House give you like two things, life and death? Boom, what you want? You know, that would be so much easier for me. But no. Now, here's the thing. If we choose life, just pick one of them, you know. If we choose life, right? Now, what happens? There's implications, okay? So, let me get high tech with you. You make your choice. <laughs> you can't even spell it, you know? Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're going to choose life, right? Good choice, right? Problem solved, right? Your life is easy from now on because you've made your choice, right? No. There's implications for this. There are circumstances that are going to happen in which the choice you made now has to become tangible, right? It can't just be a theory, you know, like uh, people, people say, oh, I asked Jesus into my life, so I'm a Christian now, I'm going to follow Jesus. Well, that's theoretical until you get to a point where it has to mean something. And that's where the implications come in. You face a crisis or an obstacle or a problem or a pain or a heartbreak or something like that. And now, what does it mean that I chose to love the Lord, walk with Him, and obey Him? What does that mean now? What does that mean tangibly? Right? And what one of the first things that happens is when you meet an implication is it's going to involve our having to make a change. And you know I love for you all to change. <laughs> I, I am so excited. And you people on the video, I love for you to change. Great. Well, I'm pretty good the way I am, you know. <laughs> I get by. And, and, if, and if the people around me don't like me, I just get new friends. You know, that's <laughs> oh, Just kidding. Just, you know, just working together. Okay, so, but we have to make these changes. And changes are difficult for us because it means that we let go of something and take hold of something else, right? Because the freedom, remember we started out talking about freedom. Choice means freedom. We have freedom from certain things and we have freedom for certain things, right? We can go, we're free to go forward in this way or, and we're free to not go this way. Again, it's a, it's a crossroads. So these changes have to happen. And when the change happens, the, this is the, the word I want to get to here. We discover that we are responsible for our life. And this is a, an obstacle. If we say, I'm going to make this choice, I'm going to choose life, I'm going to choose, just like uh, Moses tells the people, just like the Bible tells us, I'm going to choose life, I'm going to love the Lord, I'm going to follow Him, I'm going to obey Him. I'm not going to pursue other things. I'm not going to live in misery. I'm not going to be self-destructive. I'm going to make that choice. Then when the things happen and we've got to say, okay, what's the implication? That means I'm going to have to trust the Lord and not respond out of fear or my need to control or any of those things. 
I'm responsible. Now, I'm not irresponsible, but I, I just, you know, let me just share this personally. Don't use it against me, please. Um, it's really easy for me to feel like, you know, well, if they didn't do that, I wouldn't be like this, right? Or if this would have happened, then I'd be like that. And, you know, and uh, if this good thing would have happened, then I'd be different. And, and I look at all these things around me and go, wow, how would my life be if only this had happened or that hadn't happened? You ever get in that way? You ever, you ever feel that way? Or am I alone in this? Yeah, no, I get a few head bobs, bobblehead congregations. <laughs> so the thing is that, um, no, that is such a denial of our responsibility. And, and God gives us the freedom and the choice and in doing it. Here's the, here's the important thing. In giving us this choice and God giving us this freedom, he also is giving us responsibility <coughs> to live out the implications of our choice. Now, in case you wonder, I, I, I didn't go back a ways, but you can ramp up here. But in case you think that, you know, the people were all just minding their own business and, and Moses suddenly lays this on them, it actually is really interesting. And in your devotions this week, if you look back like two chapters, it's, I found it kind of funny, but it probably isn't. But it talks about all the bad things that are going to happen if they choose death. It's not like he's saying, you know, hey, you know, it's up to you. He's, he, he goes on, and I'm, I'm not kidding, it's really amazing. You know, uh, you're destroyed, you come to sudden ruin because of the evil, and you'll be plagued with diseases until you're totally destroyed, and you'll have fever and inflammation and scorching heat and drought and mildew and blight <laughs> and uh, plague and the sky over you will turn dead and... Your carcasses will be food for all. I'm not kidding. I mean, this is, whoa. Your carcasses will be food for the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and there'll be no one to frighten them away. You'll be afflicted with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. Well, I've got that all the time, you know. And uh, at midday, you'll grope around in the dark, and you'll be unsuccessful in everything you do. You'll be oppressed. You'll be robbed. You'll have no one to rescue you. You'll build a house, and you won't live in it. You'll plant a vineyard and you won't even enjoy the fruit. Your ox is going to get slaughtered. Your donkey is going to be taken away. You know, I mean, it just goes on and on. You will sow with much seed and you will harvest little. And, you, you know, it, you go, okay, that was his setup for this. And then he says, okay, make your choice. Do you want blight and sores and itching and all that stuff? Or do you want... To love the Lord, walk with Him, and obey Him. And live in prosperity, and even your family's going to be happy. Well, how's that, you know? Uh, even the kids will be happy. Wow. Which should I choose? Now, the funny thing is, we kind of laugh about that, and we say, oh yeah, geez, that's really obvious, huh? But when we get into taking responsibility, it actually requires us to make that choice before the implications happen. Before we're in the middle of the situation that's wreaking havoc on our emotions and we're trying to figure our way out. We make our choice. I'm going to love the Lord. Now you notice something here. The choice that you make, this life and death choice, is ultimately relational. Right? Here's your choice. Love the Lord. Walk with Him. That's the choice. It's not, well, get your belief system in order and, and study in graduate school and uh, learn Hebrew and Greek. And, well, you know, it's not that. It's love the Lord. Walk with Him. That's life. I've got a quote here that I found that I love. Um, 
thinking about that whole tension of making choices or living in our emotions, because I, I tend to be pretty emotional. I, I still cry at movies that I've seen before. Uh, this is from C.S. Lewis. Crying is all right in its own way while it lasts. Isn't that nice? Crying is all right in its own way while it lasts. But you have to stop sooner or later, and then you still have to decide what to do. At some point, we have to do this. And uh, so I want to uh, be a good leader for you. I want to be a good pastor for you. And so I did some research on leadership, and I, I found the, um, the best quote. Did you have that up there? Well, there we go. Leadership really signifies getting people through both example and persuasion to happily join together in pursuit of a worthwhile common cause. Herb Keller is the CEO of Southwest Airlines in this book, Nuts! Southwest Airlines Crazy Business Recipe for Both Business and Personal Success. The title is longer than the quote. But this is, what is it that we've got to do here? I want you to happily join together in what you already want to do. This is not a big thing with a mystery in heaven and you have to cross the sea to find it. It's right here, Moses said. It's in your heart. It's right near you. Choose life. It's what you want anyway. And I want to encourage you to happily join us in this adventure. And we'll deal with implications. That's why we pray, right? That's why we come around each other periodically and support uh, that's what we do. But we've already made our choice. We're going to love the Lord and walk with Him and obey Him. Okay. Lord Jesus, come into our lives today, come into our hearts and minds and our will and give us the courage to choose life. Because we want to. Because uh, the alternatives are not what we need. We need you. So be present, be powerful. We love you and we will walk with you and we'll obey you in Jesus' name. Amen.